Previously on the Writer's Room Game Show. That's it for now. Talk soon. Kissy, kissy. Oh, you said that way too slowly, sir. I do not like that. Hey, what if we remake Inglorious Bastards? Oh, with Velociraptors? Yes, and it was called Inglorious Raptors. Let's do it. I think we have to. The The idea is out there. You can't say no to that. I think it's like, it's against the law to say no to that. It's uh, against question. the law to say no to Inglorious <laughs> Raptors. And it's these huge big name actors. 100%. Like <laughs> like the biggest movie stars in the world. Even bigger movies. Like you have Brad Pitt at the front of it, but then you've got to like fill it with even bigger movie stars. Oh my gosh, what a stupid name for a movie. Dete- Detective delivers cat only to find out cat is already found. What cat Whoa. does he have? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to I'm dying. Seth is dying. I'm going to call 911 for you. Hello, ni- hello 911. Yes, I have a friend in Nashville who is dying. Hello, law and order. <laughs> I'm calling you about a criminal case. You know, this is just NBC, right? Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I am Seth. And welcome back to the Writer's Room Game Show. It's the podcast where every week we generate an original feature film idea from scratch in under 60 minutes, working from a set of random prompts given to us by a big Hollywood studio. Seth, you're sounding a little under the weather, my man. Ryan, I'm all, all the, the weather is all up on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got this, I've got the allergies that everyone else has. But I, if you're out there and you have these specific allergy attributes, I'd like you to actually write in or contact me, find me me because no one else says that had these specific symptoms and it drives me mad not 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 just to feel this but to be alone and that i cannot breathe starting from 7 p.m and it is not until 6 a.m that i can breathe again so the, the prime window when i would sleep i am coughing wheezing unable to breathe panicking praying and uh can you sur- not, somehow uh, survive can you not sleep while not breathing no i know that that's a thing that i should be able to do obviously <laughs> as an adult as a responsible adult yes here's what we need people to do join the discord by looking in the show notes and then message seth on the discord yes with your best remedies to not breathing from 7 p.m to 6 a.m. i'm gonna create a channel right now called <laughs> allergies <laughs> and we're all just gonna our, share our, podcast our discord and the health channel we're all just gonna <laughs> share our allergies health or allergies should i call it health or allergy allergies. you're literally doing it right now aren't you yes should i call it health um, or allergies you should call it health and the, and people who are right now on our discord are going to be so confused until they hear this episode i'm gonna do health and fitness <laughs> and uh, i guess while we're here you can also call in to the wrgs notes hotline which is 1-866-HEY-WRGS and uh yeah call that in and leave us your thoughts on uh how you would have done some of these ideas better how you would have maybe i don't know made a what was last week's episode it would have been inglorious raptors how would have you made a, a remade inglorious bastards and what animal or creature would you replace the heads of those bastards with <laughs> instead of raptors the heads of um, those bastards with i love that <laughs> if we weren't talking about the tarantino film inglorious bastards you would still say tell them what kind of animal would you replace those bastards with <laughs> Well, I called Tom Hanks a bastard, and you made Renee put put I, it as the cold open to that. I forgot that I did that, and so when we when he sent us that episode to review, I hit play and spit out a whole <laughs> glass of water. Like I like I kept taking drinks just so I could keep spitting the water because it was so funny. Yes, yes, yes. Seth, I know we usually in these opening this season we've been doing these opening segments. Yeah. I would love to just talk to you about a, a new something new that I would love to do on the podcast. Let's uh, this is the first time I'm talking to you about this. Okay. I'm not saying we need to open up a Patreon or do a... Why not? Uh, you know, My God, Discord. we need money. I think we probably should. You know, yeah. Money would be nice to keep this thing going. But I've been... I listen to this another podcast called Blank Check. They basically go through I directors. need to listen to Blank Check. It's fun. It's, they, uh, they, they seem they go to through. know a lot about things I like to know about. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they have like a researcher that does tons of research on all these movies, which is... We need a which researcher. Is very nice. They hire someone to do research on all these movies, so they have all these fun tidbits to do share. Do you like doing research? Do you have enough money to where you don't really need to 
be paid that much, then <laughs> join the Discord and reach out to us in the hashtag Writer's Room researcher, Game Show research researcher department. channel that I'm going to create right now as well. But uh, really. anyways, they, they go through director's filmographies, and right now they're going through Sam Raimi's, which I was like, this is the best, because I was planning on watching all of his movies to build up to... Does this, uh, does, does this special Doctor series Strange. open with them saying, for Ryan Polly? <laughs> They should. They should. But I was planning on doing that anyways before Doctor Strange since it's been like nine years since Sam Raimi's last Wow, Halloween was it Drag Me to Hell nine years ago? It was Oz the Great and Powerful. Oh, even better. Wow. <laughs> Which is not one of his best movies. No, it's uh, not his fault though. It's it's just a little too long in my opinion. About 45 minutes to an hour too long. But anyways, I'm watching these, like, these movies getting so much joy kind of having... A, it's been a while since I'd been watching almost like a, you would think of like a, a film course where it's like you're studying you know i'm watching it for enjoyment but you're also like watching one director's work and kind of seeing how they've evolved and it's this fun sort of uh, themed watching thing you know i would love to have like a writer's room game show like film club or like movie watching club where maybe once a month we watch uh you know something we can have a whole theme uh, a director's filmography or an actor or we can just kind of come up with a fun thing where we can watch a movie or our listeners could watch a movie and then we can just talk about it on like a bonus episode every month or something and are we doing uh, commentary Oh, that could be fun. Commentary could be fun. I wasn't even thinking about that. I we could do did. like a uh, mystery science theater style uh, yeah. commentary. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Because then our listeners could literally listen to us talk about it while they watch it. Which is the dream, to have us talking over <laughs> your your movie. <laughs> the first literally, time watching a movie and we're just like roasting it the My whole time. entire family's nightmare. We're talking about turning into a podcast to provide to listeners free of charge yes well okay people just like let us know if that's something you're like i i think i just want to talk about movies with you seth and uh, why not Honestly, just make it into a podcast i agree i actually think a commentary would be great we could have guests we could like yeah and we could start yeah. by watching alligator the film that darren showed me a few weeks ago <laughs> that i think i talked about on the podcast yes he did the last uh, episode last episode polly we got time we can pull it up we have we're already kind of <laughs> racing against time to get our focus group well here's the deal this is what people like and they want to hear. So I'm going to... They want to listen to clips I'm, from trailers. I'm going to nope, I'm gonna put this in the chat, the Zoom chat. Polly, that's for you to click and to watch. And I want to hear your thoughts as you watch this trailer. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, we got a full trailer. Two minutes. So I hope you guys are ready. Describe what's happening. So we got... It lives 50 feet. We got people in a, in a sewer... With flashlights, it's they're not really flashing the flash, pointing the flashlights in anywhere directional. But it's kind of like it weighs. It's like they're attached to some kind of like rubber band connected to. They're their just kind of go moving around. Yeah. And it's about to break out. Uh, an alligator eating uh, Dennis alligator Nedry, killing someone. We're looking at the one. Robert Forster. Hey, it's that guy. And it was big. You said it was dark. Now perhaps you were mistaken. No, that's a huge ass alligator. Ah! half that size would starve in a week. Well, it's feasting on human flesh, it seems. Yeah, and Robert Forster's got this, like, perfect, like, 80s normcore uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, wardrobe in this movie. It's like gray sweats with white jeans. It's like the perfect dad outfit. <laughs> have you gotten to the and sidewalk? And the alligator is busting through the sidewalk. There it is. You don't have enough joy on your face for the events that you're <laughs> so, playing out it's, before Now we get a full shot of the alligator. <laughs> And it's just a regular alligator, but a little bigger. Yeah, and yeah, it's causing police cars to blow up. <laughs> and now they they seem to be searching for it again in the sewers. Yeah, these these guys know how to use a flashlight, though. <laughs> there, it is. there it is. It's like a Jaws shot now, but in a lake. Yeah, so it's not really a Jaws shot because you can't show a fin. You just have to show the top <laughs> of the alligator. And oh, this guy gets pulled out of the water and he doesn't have legs. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, I'm down. I'm down to watch this. I feel like this trailer is just too amazing. long. <laughs> They're showing full scenes. No, I think it could be a solid, a solid two hours longer. To be honest. Okay, alligator. I'm down to watch. I'm down to watch. See so, yeah. ya. All Rider, right, writers' room game show, uh, movie watching club. Maybe uh, maybe we'll start it sometime soon. And just like that, we're receiving a call from what I can only assume is the studio. I'll put him on uh, speakerphone. 
Hello, studio, is that you? Voice, it's the big Hollywood studio. You're back, sir. You're back. I don't know your it's name. It's so good to hear from you. I'm just calling you sir because I don't actually uh, know your name. But Yeah, are we friends or just like sort of coworkers? I don't know. Sure, whatever you say. <laughs> okay. So does that uh, mean well, that we're friends? Absolutely. Okay, great. Cool. Do you want to tell us your name? Not at all. Okay. Do you want okay. to grab a drink or anything after this? No. <laughs> Okay, that's strong. Jo- strong. Okay, well, do you want to give us an assignment uh, for what to write today? Studio, tell me what's up today. We're sending over this week's assignment in an email. Let me know if you don't see it. You know, we don't ever not see it. We always do we, see we it. We always see it, yeah. so thank you. And we're t- this week, we're looking for... Look, Holly, I yeah, know you cool. thought we didn't have time for an alligator trailer, but I want to tell you, I think it served as very appropriate foreshadowing for what we're going to do today. What is our genre? Our genre is horror comedy. Love it. We got two genres in there. The tone is cry your eyes off. Okay. We can take that in multiple directions. I'd like that. The demographic are fans of procedural mysteries. Like, does that mean? Could be like police procedural, possibly. Yeah. Law and order. Oh, good. Yes. Renee, do me a favor. Anytime we say the words law and order on today's episode please hit us with the dun duns please so let's try this real quick so law and order dun, 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 dun. okay don't play the law whole theme. order renee okay good see i renee it seems like you're wanting to play the whole theme i just need the dun dun so as much as i love the theme if you could cut the straight theme into, to law and order okay renee again you started playing the whole theme again the whole intro and i'm just looking for the dun dun of law and order i don't regret this i don't regret this at all i just i just okay, feel let's, get not to, let's get to the mandate let's get to the mandate and the studio mandate is the studio wants a pg rating okay i love that actually yeah uh, oh, wait, thank studio, you so much are you, studio uh, are you still we'll there studio perhaps okay you oh. really normally you read off the genre or the, it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter Talk cool to well, you we'll later. get right to work oh Okay, Before see you later. I go, I need to ask one quick favor. When oh. you're writing today, set aside a small amount of time to remind yourselves of our ultimate goal. To create a one-of-a-kind experience for the audience that is absolutely nothing like the film Gremlins. A wholly unlikable property with no <laughs> redeeming value whatsoever. Everyone, everyone relates to what you Every said. single time. I'm thinking it's about to be something good, and then you just drop that. Pretty sure uh, that he said that exact one before, too, on the show. And, and still I still, still got my hopes up. Still um, got your So hopes thanks up. so much, studio. I'm hanging up on you. Okay, so now we just have our five ideas for the idea pile. Yes. So Paul and I are coming to this to the table with some ideas that we would like to influence to integrate into the story. And they are not required, but they give us extra points if we get them. And they are... A character who starts a podcast. Oh my gosh, we should start a podcast. Okay. Drugs. <laughs> An assassination. A black hole. And some woman named Diane. I'm Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Ryan. Cool. And that's all we need, Seth. So you know what that means. You know, I think I know what it means. And it means... The writer's room Damn it, show I was going to say it. I was going to say it the soundboard. <laughs> Too late. And you hit the sound. started. Dude, I Ryan's really Ryan's in love, a hurry. I, Ryan's in a hurry to record this episode. I think you I, can feel the pressure of the focus group waiting. <laughs> I just don't want another episode where we only have like 30 minutes to write because we've, uh, we've lollygagged Are you saying you re- have regrets about Inglorious Raptors? <laughs> because... <laughs> no... I, I don't think anyone's allowed to say that. No regrets. I just, uh, you know, we'll come up with a very fun original idea this time. <laughs> not, if you, not if you say it that way. <laughs> I really like this assignment. Horror comedy. Cry your eyes off. For fans of mystery procedurals like Law and Order. And the rating is PG. That's uh, that's super fun. That's that actually is the, super fun. PG and horror comedy already. I'm like, yeah, let's let's do something fun with this. Uh, police procedural like crime dramas are like, yeah, if you're looking at like Law and Order. Yeah, <laughs> obviously we have Law and Order. But, you know, on the movie side, there's so much you can do in terms of, like, there's stuff like, uh, I feel like within that genre, there's even, like, stuff like Heat or Seven or The Departed, like, action, act, like, uh, more uh, prestige kind of yeah. procedurals, too. And then the horror comedy, I'm like, maybe it's because I'm watching Raimi films, but it's like, uh, you know, something like uh, Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2, where it's, like, horror, but you just, like, in those movies, for instance, it's just, like, tons of slapstick comedy with a horror movie. 
Groovy. Well, like um, I, you, you say, we say procedural mystery and then mixed with a horror comedy. I thought of Hot Fuzz immediately. Which oh yeah, we yeah, talked totally. about Hot Fuzz too much on this podcast, possibly, but never too much, Edgar Wright. True, but the idea is that we like Seven itself is like a police yeah. procedural mixed with horror, horror. like I think True Detective also. I think yeah, we're going for something like that where we. It'd be great if we did like police procedural with because what I loved about True Detective was that it had that like gothic, like spiritual, borderline satanic like twist yeah. to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It'd be great if we had like an Evil Dead type, like a supernatural evil. This is perfect because there's a feature that I'm writing with our focus group today that is very similar to our supernatural entity and something that you don't expect. Okay. So just write that today on the podcast. (laughs) Yes. That's what we should do. (laughs) Is this your big Hollywood movie? Yes. I'm not going to talk about it much, but it is a potential big Hollywood movie. Yep. And I will tell the story one day. The crazy story on this podcast. But for now, leave it with leave it with the people just like that so they can inflate it as much as they want uh, and as much as like you might think you know what i'm talking about and the story is even crazier but yes i really love especially in pg could to kind of like do something ridiculous and kind of fun and almost like the 90s like uh, we the first episode of this season we of course did a remake of we're back and you think Classic. about the villain in that movie which is that's probably pg right yeah you shouldn't think about the villain in that because it was needlessly dark <laughs> but, but yeah how dark that was it's yeah. like holy crap that was pg and you don't really think about it as a kid but as an adult it's like holy shit he was like kidnapping kids to like turn into monkeys yeah so i'm like i feel like we can do something kind of ridiculous and fit it into that pg and still have it like because i'm like uh, can you think of any kids horror comedy movies like i mean like casper maybe not a lot not a lot that i like but would you consider something like that a horror comedy because it has ghosts in it kind of yes casper's a good reference my movie that i'm trying to get made my movie my movie <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i sound like my daughter uh, yeah no no horror for kids i really love your horse voice on this one so oh, it man. actually is my, really fun I mean, where it's sexy uh, sexy whirly here monster <laughs> house is a horror comedy for kids a really good one. Oh, monster house that's a good one yeah because i'm trying to think of like ways to like have oh, your classic earnest scared oh. stupid which i need to write that on my but with Raptors list. Is that PG? I have to put... Are Ernest movies PG? Yeah, they're PG because they're live action. Back in those days, like you yeah. didn't get G-rated live action stuff. Like They wanted it PG because they wanted it to be targeted toward families. And plus, I think the MPAA yeah. was like, well, it's live action, so it's immediately scary. That's scary for kids. Yeah, kids can't... Kids are scared of the real live action. Yeah, no. The stuff for kids is the animated guy who turns kids into monkeys mm-hmm. who has screws for her eyes. Good God. But yeah, like thinking of like a police procedural... Maybe is our... I wonder if our main character as a kid you know Uh, draw the line there we can do pg i think we write something really fun and then we just don't make it gory like we just make it i guess that's that's true now pg PG is tough because like pg 13 is not a scary rating but pg god if the studio wants it pg these days scary stuff and pg 13 if the studio wants it pg that probably that means that they actually do want to target it toward kids the younger age because if they were going for like families but they wanted it to be a little more accessible it would be PG. okay great yeah you think of like marvel movies or big studio movies like that those are all pg-13 and it's still like you're still probably bringing your six seven year old if you're into that like as a family let's ju- let's let's look at it so we have our idea pile stuff that goes with i think what our assignment is we've got a uh, drugs and assassination to be hilarious in a pg movie oh hilarious um, uh, <laughs> a black hole and some woman black named hole, diane some woman named diane a character, a character starts, starts a podcast. A podcast yeah well automatically right there you have someone who's doing a trans uh, I, I know this is ghostbusters afterlife but you have someone who is doing like a supernatural like ghost hunters podcast yes 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 yes. and it's a woman named diane who starts a supernatural podcast okay i mean i'm for that and it's like a serial serial style okay and she's teamed up with a cop because the cop doesn't want to team up with this crazy kook named diane because this is some crazy kook named diane but something happened that forces them to who's a uh, witness to a black hole opening up even black hole i'm thinking of like evil dead it's like the whole him getting sucked into a black hole sent back to medieval times it's like that could totally fit into like our supernatural sort of scary entity yeah the black hole um i feel like all these ideas are, are gonna we could easily use these so the cop is the main character and they're paired up with diane mm-hmm. and jack and diane i don't i wonder if is the podcast woman diane or it because it says some woman named diane like does that imply that maybe there's just a character who is just some woman named diane who is like the log lady from twin peaks who like keeps showing up like who is just like a like a a, a funny weird flavory character that is just like i don't know 
no. We can keep we can keep the podcast. I don't know. I kind of like incorporating two of our ideas in one character, but okay. I mean, a co- like, and I don't want to just like throw a woman named Diane and like. <laughs> I mean, maybe that that would be part of the fun is having a like a k- character and the whole thing behind the character is like, yeah, that's the woman named Diane, you know, and it's just <laughs> like you're saying, a log lady kind yeah. of person. But I kind of like they, just like having, they always like, see the woman named Diane right before the black hole opens up. <laughs> they don't know why, like that kind of a, a thing. And yeah, I guess it could be that. Where do you live, uh, Diane? Woman named Diane. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> so, so like over there. Oh, what about over there? What about at my house? You live there too. And over there. Diane, I'm gonna need you to come with me to. And she has a really low voice, like mine. A low yeah. allergy, a low allergenic voice, aller, allergenetic. Keep talking, Polly, and yes. I'll just slowly uh, fade myself out while I talk. <laughs> well, wow, that very natural uh, day crescendo as you talked. Um, day crescendo, Oscar. Yeah, day crescendo. <laughs> okay, no, I like where this is. Like, okay, so we have a cop and and a, and a podcaster. I like the idea of something, a murder or you know, an assassination or something like that happening. Which and there's some. Some sort of supernatural thing that happens well or, the uh, supernatural thing can't be the mystery that's got to be like the that's got to be the answer to the mystery that nobody that's the road that the detective yeah, that's, doesn't, doesn't want to go down it's got to be a disappearance or of a character like and it's pg so i think it's a disappearance somebody disappeared and and they're tied to podcaster and and in a way that is forcing them together and having you know she she, she needs uh, like a detective or a cop to help figure out what happened and he needs like the help of her because she's the, uh, what if the closest a, person to what him. if a cat or a dog is what disappeared and this detective this like everything about this <laughs> PG, job baby <laughs> <laughs> Everything about this cop and about about this about this case is just roll your eyes worthy to this cop. Uh, but then we take this brings it, me, this bring me back to the early days of our podcast doing uh, Velcro and Bird, our our, P, our G rated movie, which would just put animals in there, and we're like, yep. yeah, it's G rated. Yes, I like that. The disappearance of an animal, cat or a dog. <laughs> which one's funnier? I feel like a cat might be. It reminds me of shorter. Cat to me cat. is more creepy, like horror. Cat is way more horror to me. Than dog. And also, no one cares about a cat, like. <laughs> If you lose Sorry, a dog, <laughs> if you lose a dog, that sucks. Like that's an emotional yeah. loss. You lose a cat. You lose a cat. Eh, it's like maybe it'll come back. You it know? might. It might come back. They're, if not, they're just roaming. There's plenty of them, and they die all the time and disappear. Like having a cat is the same as not having a cat, and not having a cat is the same as having a cat. So and that, we can we can have that be a part of like the cop not wanting to like because oh, it's like it's a cat. You know, it's like yeah, uh, we do everything we can to did, make it to where this is not something that we really feel we need to find. They disappear all the time, but then it's opening up this kind of scary sort of world but it's you know having the and comedy to me is easy oh! with that too we can- sorry what if <laughs> he goes and he finds the cat oh wow. <laughs> That got Damn. me. Damn. Sorry. That got me. Your face was great for that, too. That's going in the trailer. Ooh, uh, man. So what if in the first act, he finds the cat? Like, just goes out and is like, there, found it. Brings it home. And like, I've got your, opens the door, and they already have the cat. They're like, oh, he already came home. And he's like, but this one has, like, the specific markings. Like, it's literally the same cat. Like, yeah. first he's like, girl, they have, they already have the cat. Great. I've got some other cat. So he just lets it go. Like, he doesn't care. He just lets it go. And then he's sitting there at night, and he cannot help but think more about this case even though he doesn't want to he hates this case for whatever reason he has this case but he can't help but be a good detective and he's like so he goes back out and finds that other cat again part of me wants that film noir kind of like first person voiceover dialogue while he's thinking about this stuff too well Uh, it'd be funny if he was listening to it and then he reached over and stopped his tape player and was like (laughs) yep uh, I agree. Like sometimes I play so, no, at the end of the narration. He records is, himself. The end of the narration is back. he's like, is the end of that narration is it moves down toward his face. You know, you know, like uh, it, it, it cranes down, you yeah, know, yeah. over him and we hear the narration. And then right as the tape player is coming into frame, the narration says, that's why I record myself and listen back later to see if it's really what I want to do. And he reaches over and hits stop and he goes, yep. And gets up and goes and does it. I love it. I love it. So and I love the those kind of things. Like uh, I feel like in the new Batman, it would uh, it was like him journaling, and we we were listening to his voiceover as we pan over the paper and stuff. Yeah, it's like you really write all of this stuff in a journal. You know what? It's, but it motivated it. That's really what thing. it really did. So he goes out in the middle of the night to find this cat again. Again, I love mm-hmm. that we're adding stakes to this very unnecessary. Dude, like scaredy cat. Is that what it's called? Absolutely not. <laughs> 
do not like that whatsoever. This welcome to the 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 no but podcast instead of yes and. Is that a joke that anyone's ever <laughs> made is, before? This uh, is Ryan yes and Seth no buts. No period. So goes out finds this cat again and actually does the research and like it or like, but actually like confirms this cat and now this cat by the way becomes a character that he cares about. The, the title is Cat and Mouse. It's a detective story. Will you stop? Will you just stop <laughs> and write this movie? So this cat now this like clone cat this double cat is now a character that will be part of the story for the rest of the movie and that will like he'll warm up to and will become like his pet right which that's fun but then we find out it's evil well it's this oh, okay yes because it's the same cat it's clearly he he confirms that this is the same cat as the other person's cat it has some kind of markings and whatever and things and maybe the chip the chip inside it's the same chip because they put chips in animals now mm-hmm. i did my work what happens next <laughs> Well, I think the only thing that if, if our movie is starting with the, trying to find a cat, he finds it and then the cat's already there. I think from there, like we need to really, <laughs> I'm trying to, the PG thing, it'll be interesting. But one of those cats to me, it needs to be evil. Like there is this weird thing that happened. Maybe the it's black the one hole, the kid has. It, yeah. It went in the black hole, out came two, somewhere two cats. Suddenly the they black, were, if yeah, they the were black spit out or it's, whatever. It's the Black uh, Lodge. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For fans of Twin Peaks. And even for not fans of Twin Peaks. He just won't know what it is. But yeah, and then I feel like, yeah, one of them is evil and then we we have to, slowly over the movie, maybe by the midpoint, they found out that, oh yeah, these two cats are the exact same cat and one of them is sort of it's the spawn of Satan. <laughs> Well, it'd be uh, great if, like, so while he's uh, figuring out that this cat that he found is actually this, like a double, like a, a match to mm-hmm, the cat that mm-hmm. naturally just came back home, while he's discovering that, and again, I love the fact that he's f- discovering this, like, because he can't help but care about, but, like, do this case when he yeah, does not yeah, want to yeah. care, because it's so dumb. Meanwhile, simultaneously, this cat is somehow being evil at the house. Like, the, mm-hmm. the, the cat that returned to the house, the evil one. I don't know what it's doing that's evil. Yeah, but. we need, like, we need a mystery though like we need something for uh for our we already, cop to actually like no we already do like it started with he he got given this stupid cat case but yeah i know the mystery would be like him trying to figure out well but now it's a the, personal obsession to where he's like now it's like as we move into the second act he's just kind of trying to figure out why there's two of the same cat now like and then be done with it as fast as possible and then that's like the thread that now is pulling him into and like and then at the you know police precinct they can be like are you bro are you still on that cat case like <laughs> They found the cat. It's done. He's like, I know. I. <sighs> it's actually weird. It's actually really weird. Just hear me out, okay? There's two cats. One, and he has like diagrams and stuff. And so he looks crazy to his peers. We need more cats. Sorry, continue. What if, yeah, more cats keep showing up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what, that was my thought. That's great. So he's like now crazy to the pre- precinct when he was put on this cat case as like a punishment or he lost a bet or something. And now he's being pulled into this weird, crazy cat mystery that and we just need else- to thinks it's weird that there's like suddenly seven cats of the same kind Ex- like, dude, i mean it's a, the cats are everywhere like, their argument like, is that, is that cats <laughs> who cares cats look the same that cat that's the what if he's like look there there's another one right there he's like that is a different color that's not even a cat and he's like I, it looks exactly the same proves my point and they're like you know what i mean but funny the yeah. funny version of that and he's like i i can't uh, uh. and another guy's like cat got your tongue Polly, damn it. Will you <laughs> take this seriously? I'm really into this idea. <laughs> Me too. This is a PG horror comedy. We yeah, gotta throw but th- you know how you know how passionate I am about this. Just because <laughs> it's for kids and just because it's PG does not mean it has to suck. It yeah, does it, not. Ryan can't have any fun. It's not. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. You can't. You can't have fun if it means cat's got your tongue. God. <laughs> Ugh. That was a good line. It wasn't. It was a okay, bad and one. And then, so we need maybe this, the lady, the owner of the cat, I guess we're naming her Diane, huh? It's, no, I still think the woman named Diane needs to be. She can be some thing. sort of, you know, some, some a person we act later or meet later that knows a little bit more about like the creepy sort of black hole kind of thing that could sort of maybe do some exposition, you know, near like the midpoint or like what, when he's like figuring I, out. I liked the, I liked the weird David the, Lynch thing of of the woman named diane who just is like the what's the word not the canary in the coin but the uh the thing that shows up before the storm does the thing that shows up before like it's she's like the thing that says oh god things are about to get weird like because diane just showed up well she didn't show up until the very very end of the, the last season 
Uh, oh, Agent no, no, Cooper's no, 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 talking no, I'm to sorry. Diane. On. You're right. That's uh. confusing if you're making a Twin Peaks reference and saying Diane. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying our idea that we were oh, joking the log about lady. a woman named Diane who happens yes. to appear whenever something weird and black hole related yes, happens. Yes, yes, totally. I think, yeah, she's the weird person. And maybe we but don't even pod- get explanation our, from her. Yeah, so maybe it's like our podcaster or something. It doesn't matter. The owner of the cat, I feel like something needs to happen to her to really, like, weird stuff is happening because she sort of, like, her cat is the one that could sort of start it at all. I I feel like we need to especially if these cats are evil like if, if something is happening with maybe it's her sorry i'm just like brainstorming here if her cat her first cat is the one that went through the portal and that specific cat is the one that got like i don't know if it would be possessed or what what would have happened oh no like, i think uh, it came back and uh, its evil clone came back and the evil clone yes. went back to the house and it went and he found it. Yeah. I think the evil cat needs to be with her. Yes. What if she's and a podcast, a podcaster, she just started a podcast and that's her thing and we can not track with her for a little bit, but then when he's going crazy at the precinct, they can be like, bro, you sound like victim or whatever, like so-and-so, like you've been listening to too much of her podcast. Like, what are you talking to? He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, her podcast went full mystery and she's talking about how her cat like basically tried to kill her, et cetera. And he's like, <laughs> what? And then he goes to her house. He finds, he finds out about it like episode 24 or something. Like, yeah it's like yeah man that's a uh, that's totally what her podcast is about you're a bad detective and yeah and she's like my cat has tried to kill me nine times <laughs> turns out i only have one life <laughs> one life all right fine i can play this and game s- s- serial voice i'm just trying to make a cat pun happen in this title set that's all you can keep trying when um, i like one I'll, you'll know because yeah i feel like i don't know with pg movies how far you can go but i feel like she needs to die or be like threatened and be real danger like near the end when you he's like fig- he danger. figures out what happens and he has to like somehow defeat these evil spirits and like save the original cat from you know being doomed for eternity or whatever and uh i, yeah, I don't know what i think if yet. we're constantly having fun with it and there's no gore or blood or like or a sense of like there's no dread to the thing and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. i think we can get away we can get away with it. i think it's all just because i think the cat it needs to be like did you ever see cats and dogs back in the day polly i don't know if we should keep doing this podcast <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a yes or no question. What were they? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't. I think the answer is no. I don't. Remember, okay. Remind well, me what when it I is. was a kid, I really liked that movie. It's like these talking cats and dogs, and the dogs were the good guys. They're like secret agents, and these cats were like secret villains. agents. Yes, it's it's a crazy like kids movie thing. But the cats were villains, and they were threatening world domination or whatever. And they were really villainous. But it was this like very fun. They're not like threatening. You don't feel dread from it. It's just like oh that's funny cats are evil you know <laughs> so i feel like if everything the cats are doing like if it's just i i think twin i think i'm just getting a little too caught on our twin peaks and like satanic kind of stuff hey no buddy gravity yeah, falls buddy just, gravity falls was it was a show that totally yes, gravity did that. falls is perfect and yeah. it, and, and like so i i telling you we can now is this the film i just put it in the chat that you're talking about no it's called cats and dogs so it's not called the uh, truth about cats and dogs starring uma thurman and janine garofalo no it's not from 1996 movie. okay i remember there is a stacked voice cast there always is Cats there has to be in movies like this because toby, Mag- toby mcguire it. plays the lead the beagle whoa cool god and then you got jeff movie? goldblum as uh like Pro- professor brody he was like this sort of you know doc dog I'm not too acid not too alkaline all right immune response and then you had Sean Hayes, Michael Clark Duncan, a lot of other people. Oh, yeah, Joe Padigliano. I think he was the lead cat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, that was Sean Hayes. Anyways. Oh. I'm getting uh, another call. Let's see if it's uh, from the studio. Here we go. Hello? Is that you, studio? Maybe. <laughs> you are uh, one okay. coy bastard. Do you know that? <laughs> Absolutely. Studio, why are you calling us right now? Do you have a wild card mandate? Perhaps. Damn it, tell us the damn truth. Perhaps. Hey guys, there have been some developments since we last spoke. You'll find all the details in the facts we just sent over. It oh. is unclear where my voice is coming from. You really need to say oh different my God. things. Sometimes. It's coming from the phone. It's coming from the phone. <laughs> Today's wildcard mandate is... The head of the studio feels like there aren't enough wise old men in movies these days. Make sure a wise old man delivers tons of exposition. We can do that. Absolutely. 
Great. Well, thank you so much for calling, and uh, we'll get right back to work. We're so excited to hear what you come up with. Talk soon. I love you very much. <laughs> you too, love pal. you too. Bye. <laughs> See you later. I will take him over the British guy. Yeah, I think so too. Are you saying you prefer Americans to give you studio assignments? Damn right. I prefer <laughs> American America. That's what I'm thinking of the Bo Burnham's character in Parks and Rec that sings the songs about freedom and stuff. Yes. I'll bring the beer, the troops will bring the freedom. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> She don't care about no fancy trend. She's just a mom from Old South Bend. Get home safe, boys, and thank you for protecting our freedom. I feel like we can easily have an old, a wise old man delivering some exposition in this I, movie. I, I hate think it. That's, I hate it, but let's do it. It's it's a hey. If that's what the studio wants, you know, we can we can maybe nothing deliver ever it to went them. wrong from the studio wanting something. No, but it's a it's a tropey tropey thing. We got to figure out how to make it not tropey. Yeah, I feel like we can kind of you know flip it around and make it something really interesting, unique. Make fun of it, maybe. I need to get this cats and dogs Wikipedia page off my screen. It's messing me up. <laughs> Okay, so I feel like we got we got something here. What if I feel like I don't watch enough police procedurals to kind of know some of the sort of trope kind of things well, the tr- that we okay, can Okay, the tropey f- thing like you go police procedural essentially like something something cr- bad happens. There's a crime, right? Uh, inciting yeah. incident of whatever the case. They go talk to one person who seems like obviously that's the person, right? And they're like, "Well, I don't actually I wasn't I wasn't there. I I have this alibi." They're like, "Well, all right. That person really seemed like they were going to be it because they were played by a big name star." guest star but whatever maybe they're just in that one scene probably so then they go talk to some other people (laughs) and we work our way back around to where oh my god it might have actually been that first person Mm -hmm. and so it's going to be that first person and then you know what oh you know what maybe it absolutely wasn't and then it turns out it absolutely was like that (laughs) tends to be that's like what law and order would be like that's exactly what it would be would be like if we were making you know something like law and order or maybe even CSI Miami. <laughs> All right. Anyway, cat yeah, is so lost. We... Detective stuck with cat case. Detective finds cat. Det- detective delivers cat only to find out cat is already found. What <laughs> cat Whoa. does he have? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'm dying. Seth is dying. I'm going to call 911 for you. Hello, ni- hello 911. Yes, I have a friend in Nashville who is dying. Hello? Law and order? <laughs> I'm calling you about a criminal case. You know, this is just NBC, right? I need both departments. I need both of our judicial I need branches. SVU on this. This is a special victim. Like, sir, I don't think you know what that actually means. <laughs> I don't think you understand what special victims unit is actually referring to. I can't to. find my cat. It's very special to me. My podcast host are you, and friend. Are you, tr- are you trying to tell me that he's not special? Uh, in, in this regard, yes. Uh, I actually um, am, sir. Man, yeah, we need a... Uh, it's man. sexual. Sexual cases. That's that's what the special victims unit is. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, am, I, am I remembering that wrong? Now I'm suddenly backtracking. No, that is. That's for you. That's what Straight it's Straight up sex. Yes, yeah. it's uh, it's very unfortunate that show has been around for so long, and people are so interested in that. People love sex they lo- crimes. They like the characters, you know. Yeah, they're in, they're in it for the articles, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Okay. So what 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 interesting thing can we ha- happen? I think I'm just struggling to see. I think the, we've uh, had plenty of interesting things happen. Oh, so, we've got an interesting thing happen. Just the solving the case because I like something like True Detective, where it, Rust Rust Cole, I think was his name, the the lead character, see the one, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character, where he by the end of the series he realizes that there's this supernatural sort of thing him struggling with his faith and kind of like all he realizes that there's this big this bigger supernatural thing but i don't know if he really like solves it's not like this thing oh, yeah. where dude it's very satisfying they solve the hell out of it i know it's like it's satisfying in that way but there's still like this spoiler um, alert for true detective season one they solve the case and it's like a satisfying thing but if, and him and uh, uh his partner are like you know they work out their relationship or whatever but there's still like this bigger grander like super unexplained kind of thing where he's like i don't need to know the origin of this i don't need to know like so i don't know if there's like an explanation for the black hole and for like no not an explanation but like a yeah basically you're looking for like a bad guy like what's the answer 
of the final thing. Like I can come, we can come up with internal. Like, what if Diane is the bad guy? A woman named Diane. I don't want her. I want her to be caught in the crossfire. I want her to not even be real. I want her to be some kind of like the universe's representation. Like how our brain interprets this weird metaphysical thing. Like we, our brain needs to make sense of it, so we make it as a person, a woman named Diane. Ah, what if everyone sees it differently? Some people see it as. I was just thinking Joan Cusack as the Diane to our main character. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, some sort of woman character actor playing, you know, at, at least representing Diane to our main character. And then maybe we find out, yeah, it's, it's uh, it appears different. And we can have these huge name actors play. Yeah, the, uh, definitely. And, and quick quick roles so what if people. what if he goes to this uh, podcast lady and the two of them that end up being like she's kind of the b story even though uh, yeah she's kind of the b story and the two of them kind of team up to figure this out like her podcast she pivots her podcast into this like mystery podcast where it started as a a rewatch podcast of something right <laughs> something that like it's some show that nobody cares about but she's uh, making a show of it. yes everybody has a rewatch show now 100 percent, and it should be not gilmore girls because people do care about that one one tree hill i feel like i feel like people care about that too like a very specific no, sect of no, people it's one tree hill is like the cats of like the cat of tv shows like watching one tree hill is like not watching one tree hill it's exactly the same so i know nothing about one tree hill except uh Chad michael murray was in it uh i think chris pratt was in it too. really i think oh, i did hear he played like a bully on a show he played a bully point. on every show on the wb for like <laughs> a solid 10 years so she's like got a podcast for if it's one tree hill it's one tree hill if it's not it's one tree hill that's the thing about One Tree Hill is that it, it literally <laughs> Okay, it's One Tree Hill. And now she's pivoted it to her One Tree Hill podcast. Which I actually and it's really called One this. Tree Cast. <laughs> One tree cast is about trees. Like no, no, it's One Tree Hill. It's no, about the yeah, show. It has to be like it's just the right title where it like or it's isn't called, good or Tree it's Watch because it's a rewatch podcast. It's tree the Tree Watch. watch. So you're watching tree trees. Watch. It's a, and it, she has a people who think it's going to be a nature podcast, but it's not. Like it's Tree Watch. Then well, One we tree started Hill. watching the show and it's really delightful. And so it's he makes fun but of her, you know, at first, but then they become like a team because she, and she's now like figuring out why is my cat evil? Which what evil things does this cat do? I think. They the cat needs to do like just like ruin her days and stuff at first like it's not like trying to kill her at first it's like i don't know throwing up on her stuff knocking everything off the you know it's acting it was like a perfectly nice cat but now it's just doing bad cat stuff and at first she thinks it's bad odd but then yeah. it starts to do like poison because i feel like i have friends who like they, their cat does terrible things and i'm like you just need to get rid of that cat so it can maybe start with that and then actually start doing odd things that cats aren't supposed to be able to do like poison people 100 <laughs> percent. but she walks into the kitchen and it's doing something with it's like pause and then it sees her and like stops and drops what it's doing and before that it's like sharpening things sharpening things things, things would fall off them. the the, the table like the counter but it's off she turns and sees that something's broken and the cat is sitting there so it's like it does all this stuff off camera off screen for the first you know little bit and then it starts so and the the cat is slowly anthropomorphized like acting like a human a little bit more because i do think it'd be creepy oh, like, in and a it's funny kids way if a, the cat's walking on twos by the by the end and it's killing a <laughs> ton of birds like more birds than is than you would see in and there's the it's that classic thing where it's like you know a cat licks its lips and there's like feathers on it <laughs> what if it kills the cats by looking what if it kills birds by looking at them like what if it just looks at a bird and the bird falls out of the sky that's pretty is that pg yeah can we get away with that yeah i mean as long as we're not like doing weird drone music while slowly zooming in on the cat <laughs> and then seeing the bird like startle us by flying into the window or something i think if we make kind of a joke of it like she's like the cat would literally look at birds in the bird like she can say yeah, it yeah and i think that it's we can really it's really odd but she kind of writes it off talks about it in her podcast and i do like the idea of him slowly coming to a real realization that something creepy is happening and they're like oh yeah she's got her podcast like she's been talking about this for weeks and he's like wait there's a podcast and no, then it's no if he's he's like what the one tree hill pod podcast he's like no bro it's not that anymore at all it is full-on cat mystery Dude, podcast. tree cast rules <laughs> yeah it's not even about trees anymore it is full-on like scary cat podcast and i like the idea of him cutting back to him in his apartment listening and to tree now Watch. instead of the tape playing it's like him listening to the podcast uh, oh he's like, like i decided i needed to like i think i need to listen to her podcast like finally it's finally time i sit down and listen to this podcast and get down 
down to the bottom of it. So he hits stop on his voiceover tape, right? Press play and he hits play and sits there for a second and you know pours a glass of whiskey or something. And we slowly move in. And then after a couple of beats, we realize and he realizes, damn it, this is still just the One Tree Hill part. Like when does the <laughs> when does it get to the cat stuff? It shows him scrolling on his phone all the way down. He listen, yes, yeah, so and he listens to so much of it. It's like unfortunately, it didn't seem to be a hard pivot into the cat mystery. And so he's slowly- like, so I started doing what any person would do. I turned on One Tree Hill, and he starts to really enjoy it. <laughs> That's like, absolutely it's actually great. delightful. So he has to listen to the whole thing and he listens to it like two times speed or whatever. And in the process gets actually interested in One Tree Hill and yeah. gets into it, right? And then um, starts to figure out the cat stuff and then goes to find her. And he goes to find her right around the time in Looper that we meet up with. Damn, I love Looper so much. With, uh, yeah, with uh, uh, Emily Blunt. So she's the like B story of the movie, but she really comes in like around sequence D, I think. In the yeah, story. and she's tied to the, what we, the antagonist, quote unquote, of the picture. Yeah, of the picture. Normally your B story would enter in sequence C at the top of C or at the end of of B, but this B story, in that case a looper, happens at the top of D. So it's doable. So it's what I'm getting at. It's like we spend sequence C like with him doing this, like investigating this double cat mystery like on his own and kind of looking crazy. By the end of it, he's looking crazy to the precinct. And they're like, bro, you just listen to a podcast. And he's like, and so then he listens to it and then he goes to find her. And he goes to find Mm -hmm. her at the top of D. That's when the two of them possibly start joining forces and sharing their resources to figure out like what the hell's going on with these cats. Now there has to be more than just this one cat. There has to be stuff tied to it like people. What if there are like yeah. people that have been arrested because they're the clones of other people? What if there are... Yeah, and I was going to say, I feel like they need to trace back to the, try to find like where did this happen possibly and kind of try to figure out where the cat... Like where'd you lose the cat? And if she was like, you know, the last time I saw it, it was around here. Maybe they go to a location and they see some sort of... Uh, maybe that's where they see Diane or something. Or it's like near where the black hole actually happened. Oh. Almost like a, in Twin Peaks where there's a specific location location where they can go walk through the forest or whatever and get into the black lodge like like a strange location where yeah all 100%. this hubbub is happening 100%. and maybe the final act can kind of happen there and like trying to close the portal or and it shouldn't be something scary it should be something really dumb like a roller skating rink or like a mall like something pot like poppy <laughs> yeah no i love that and i like the idea of maybe like not to like borrow from other movies but if there's like a if there's like a the black hole opens again at the end and it's like threatening to uh what if it what if it's after her what if it's after the what podcast if, what if at the midpoint they go and they find it and he gets cloned that's interesting so the second um, half of the movie is like evil self is out there yeah i like that and i like the idea of like they at the end they have to like try to close the portal and seal off all of the evil clones somehow if there's some sort of i think uh, we should not, call the movie tree watch by the way you thought my ideas were bad? <laughs> I think I think Tree Watch is a weird name. That makes I'm going to give you the that makes the you go. What is Tree Watch no about? But. You're like, what is Tree Watch about? And then you end up, and then you get told this, the plot, and you're like, what the hell is this movie? I have to see it. <laughs> they just said it had to be PG. They did not say it had to be targeted toward families. <laughs> Yeah, it's, tar- it's targeted towards fans of procedural movies Yeah, that happen to have families. But not that there needs to be like a book of the dead or some sort of physical thing that they can use to help close the, the portal. But if, if I think it would help if there's some sort of, you know, a manifestation of this evil or something that they could use to uh, help. I just don't know what that is. What if it's him? Like, uh, what if what if he's like in a state of like at the beginning of the story where he's like, I'm not doing any good as a cop. Like, I picked a really shitty career path because it is it taking it too seriously if we kind of work in this like all of this like disillusionment and like reckoning of everything that's been going on lately like how it would feel to be someone who became a cop to do good things and then find out like oh i'm basically a bad guy like i'm there's more bad here than anything else and that is interesting then if there's a bad version of him in the second half of the story and he's forced to kind of lean toward the good side he can basically learn how to be a good cop in the story like how he can it it doesn't have to be about being a cop it can just be about like renewing like understanding relearning how to do good in your profession or how to still be create value or i don't know like how to do something well like yeah. basically it's about learning yeah, how to be, be good. a good person be a good person i like that we're out of time so we got to pitch what we got tree watch which, which is not tree watch let's go to, let's go to a focus group <laughs> All 
our guest today. He is a writer and director and one of the other uh, writing partners that I work with uh, on the reg. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Matt Black to the show. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Matt, uh, there's a, how there's did applause you... underneath us right now. Yeah, there is. Okay. And it's still going, actually. Um, it's a, I hope it's a standing ovation. It's a standing ovation. And also, it's now underscored with the Law and Order thing. Mm. <laughs> Matt Black. Dun, 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 dun. How do you, who gave you the coolest name that's ever been given to a person? My parents tell me that they named me. I don't believe it. Um, I think that a cowboy walked, entered through town and was like passing through the hospital and turned and looked at your parents and right as you were born and nodded his head and went, that boy's name's going to be Matt Black. And they went, how did you know our last name? And then he disappeared. Um, I like that story better than my parents <laughs> named me. So the pregnant uh, pause, that was perfect. That's the story, man. That's the story now. Yeah, no, I don't know. My full name, my Christian name is Matthew Black. Still not cool. nearly um, as cool. That sounds like a writer cool. or a director. To Matthew be Black. Matthew Black, yeah. Matt Matthew Black sounds Black. like a really cool dude that's going to wear a cowboy hat and walk through town and name babies. Yeah. I told or Seth like, that I, I should be named gl- glossy, glossy Black. <laughs> How awesome Semi-gloss? Yeah, semi-gloss. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be semi-gloss. a killer um, nickname. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Googling my name is no fun because it's all just motorcycle helmets and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, did you my mean God. Matt Black with an E? That's what it asks every yeah. time. I wish pe- when yeah. people Google my name, they just got motorcycle helmets. I feel like that would make me significantly cooler. Instead, they so, get Arn Rabinowitz's face. That's funny. Someone else's face on you. Yeah. Well, there was a while where Google thought that I was Arn Rabinowitz and would like put his pictures. And then when they couldn't get it right, they put Ben's face instead. Hmm. Love it. I don't know who that is. What? What is the, is the first name? <laughs> oh, Aaron. He was. He's a guy I worked with at Red Giant and made a bunch of short films with. Um, he, oh, okay. We both have dark hair and glasses. That is the extent of the Venn diagram. Do you is want to hear a our movie caster? idea? Matt? Do what? Do you want to hear our movie idea? I would love to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let me give you our assignment today. We will be pitching you a horror comedy. Okay. Um, the tone is "Cry Your Eyes Off." Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we thought of, we thought about that as we were, we were going over this. Um, the fans uh, or the demo is fans of procedural mysteries. Okay. The mandate was it's rated PG, mm. and the wild card mandate was the studio basically they missed those scenes in movies where old guys deliver wisdom via the form of exposition, and so they wanted to us to have that in our movie. Oh yeah, uh, which we do have in our movie, and so that's I'll, great. I'll hand it off to Seth to kind of start off our pitch of our pg horror comedy so seth okay if you want to take it away so our main character is a detective who like a, a cop not like a private detective and he either we haven't decided he either loses a bet or is given this case and it's kind of a joke or it's a punishment not sure what it is but he gets this he is given this case that is uh, essentially a woman's cat has disappeared so he's like this is a guy who clearly is like sick of this job done with this like this job he doesn't like he can't figure out if he doesn't like the precinct he works at or if he doesn't like being a cop in general and it's not what he thought it was going to be growing up and he's all disillusioned and such and so he goes out and just finds this cat he goes out and asks this woman questions about like tell me where'd you last see your cat what's your cat like and this woman he learns like she hosts she just started a podcast that's what that's what her vocation is he's like okay what do you actually do for a living and he's like no i i I do my podcast like it's a it's a one tree hill rewatch podcast it's called tree watch and or what was the other one polly what was the one you came up with (laughs) just one tree cast (laughs) oh yeah either way it's sounds like a nature podcast like it sounds like it's about trees but it's okay a, it's a one tree hill rewatch right so he's like great something people need and not taking this seriously he goes out and just immediately finds his cat and he brings it back to the house he's like that was the easiest thing that i've ever done in my life literally like right there so he goes Perfect. and gets it comes back and when he gets there she already has a cat there the cat apparently already came home so he found someone else's cat that looks exactly alike okay great mm. bye cat doesn't even bother to put this uh, another cat back where he found it just lets it go like who cares? <laughs> Then he goes home and we're hearing this, uh, this narration, this like, you know, voiceover, like in, you know, most not pulpy noir yeah. films. And yeah, his, his voice and, uh, he's recording his, his thoughts kind and, of, uh, like a journal. And he, and he can't help but think about like, should I, like we're hearing his, you know, a narration talking. He's like, he's like ah, that night I, I can't stop thinking about this cat as much as I want to stop thinking about this cat. Unfortunately, I feel like I should go find this cat and see if my suspicions are true. And that's why, and as he's saying this in 
the voiceover, we're like craning down, and we right as right as he uh, says the next line, a tape player comes into view, and he's like, "That's why I, I record for occasions like this. I record my thoughts, I sp- speaking them out loud, so that I can listen to them back and decide if it's really what I want to do." And he turns and hits stop, and he's like, "Yep, it's what I want to do." And he gets up, so so he, so he gets up, walks outside, and before he could even like, he doesn't even need to make a journey. He sees the cat; it's right there, and so he's like, "Oh, sweet, got the cat." Little does he know that Seth should I kind of spoil our I feel like no, I should kind of get into he what goes our, out to find the cat yeah. in the middle of the night because he can't help but like he's like oh I don't care about this case it's done but I Oh, I want to know. I I need to know if the, if my suspicions are correct, which is that this and the cat is exactly the same as that other cat. Like they have specific markings on them. And he actually kidnaps the girl's cat real quick in the middle of the night and finds this other cat. Takes them to this vet. They do the scan scan thing with the chips in the cat, like as people put chips in their animals now. And it's the same code. So this is literally two of the same cat. He returns that cat mm. back to her. She catches him. Gets pissed at him. He gets in trouble at the precinct. Like why did you go take her cat again? You literally just got it back for he's like no i got it's not her cat it, it is but it's not and now the police precinct thinks he's crazy because he's like he's drawing maps with yarn about cat clones and two cats right sorry Pop, mm-hmm. take it i'm sorry anyways I'm, the, the, i am surprisingly the, passionate about our clone cat detective film. i am loving it so no, far we need it's our it's our movie you gotta have passion so the entire precinct thinks this guy's crazy he's like dude you saw two cats that look similar i could go in our alley right now and find you three cats that look similar cats are everywhere they're cats he's like look at that um, one that's like, exactly yeah, there's that's one the walking around the window right now that is a completely different species that's a completely different color that's barely even that might even be a dog he's like no nah, it's the same same cat so it's like they think they think he's going crazy but he's like i see like i see like i just saw like five of these same cats like i'm not going crazy anyways he throughout the course of film he ends up going to set did you ever talk about the, our podcast evolving no because um, around this time we, the we cop have, is like you sound like i think we like span this over the course of time like we somehow find a way to like to cut ahead a couple weeks like he he keeps researching this cat while doing other and stuff and, and he's by the way he he this other cat he has deeper. now is a pet it's like his friend like he's going deeper and okay, deeper into gotcha. his ryan his, you said he's finding more cats that are the same like five cats oh, yes, all, yeah that. there's he's he's finding more and more of these cats as this goes on he's like i need to go i need to like of the same one cat happening. or multiple cats like different cats like oh no in twos. yes yes no he's finding yes that's what i'm saying like he, he keeps on seeing multiples of cats and so of different cats uh, yes okay gotcha. but they're like <laughs> this is know. a conversation by the way that happens Sorry. at the precinct like and that's <laughs> the tone of the story it's like uh, it's it's very very like yeah Sorry. okay yeah, yeah yeah but anyway so um he's talking about and someone at his precinct's like dude you sound exactly like the lady from this podcast that i've been listening to this uh this mystery podcast it's incredible and he's like what's it called and he's like tree watch and he's like wait the the one tree the crazy lady that like had the first cat and they're like yeah dude like her this uh podcast kind of turned into her talking like these true crime stories about her cat that just kind of been going crazy her one tree hill evil. rewatch podcast and he's like no bro she pivoted she pivoted like two weeks ago uh, and we and we find out that this uh podcaster that we we met uh this the owner of this first cat the cat is actually be, becoming progressively and progressively evil and doing these terrible things to her it started with just like you know this good cat was suddenly misbehaving and sort of like you know pooping in the house and knocking things off tables but it's gone as far as the the cat it seems like a crazy occurrence but it would look at a bird and the bird would fall out of the sky it's like doing these crazy things so he's like i need to listen to this podcast so we meet our detective or our cop back in his house and now instead of listening to his own tapes he's listening to the tree watch podcast but he realizes that he has to make it through like he doesn't know when the one tree hill stuff stops and when the mystery podcast starts so he has to listen through hours and hours of one tree hill podcast <laughs> to get to the mystery stuff so now he has and to watch so, it to know what she's talking about right so and he yeah, actually really, say, does he start watching it he actually really gets into the show he's like this is yeah. a delightful show but anyways as he's just listening like watching one tree hill and listening to the free watch podcast joyfully one day that's when it pivots and he's like oh yeah I, I forgot this is what i'm doing and he starts to hear her stories eventually it's enough to where he's like i need to go talk to her i need to figure this out because like i'm not crazy this 
this is like really this cat is evil and it's i have her cat and this is like an evil version of her cat anyways so that's when he goes to meet um our podcaster gal gal is her name i forgot to mention that and seth what uh what happens after that well so they end up like working together essentially to and she hates him because she's like you made fun of me in my podcast you didn't find my cat he's like i actually did find your cat and he's like nope you didn't find my cat and then you stole my cat and returned an evil cat it's like no no that's the cat i returned to you that evil cat. like so we have this fun dynamic between the two of them where they hate each other but they have to work together and they're actually going to pool the resources to like figure out what's going on and they find that there's this area in town it's in this like abandoned roller skating rink or something and no not abandoned it's like a functioning roller skating rink but no one ever goes to it because no one who goes to a roller skating rink now right i mean lots of people but roller skating rink during the day yeah during the day definitely not so Long story short, there is a black hole in one of the bathrooms of this skating rink that a cat got in. The cats get into inexplicably. It's behind the skating rink. Sorry, behind the the skating rink. And the way to know when this thing's going to open up. Maybe a dumpster. Maybe a dumpster. Yeah, a dumpster. Right before this thing opens up, whenever it opens up, anything that goes into it comes back out, but with an evil version of itself as well. That's like the super simplified version of it. Also, the way to know when it's going to open, no one knows when it's going to open or not. They're the only two people that are really aware of this thing. That and like the wildlife. And they quickly find that the only way to know that it's going to open is this random woman, old woman that says her name is Diane just shows up kind of looking aimless and wandering around in the parking lot. And whenever Diane shows up, that black hole ends up opening and the weird shit happens. Right. So, and she just sort of this, she's just looks content, sort of just like she's there, uh, she's you know, like the walking old lady around from the parking Titanic. lot, walking down the alley. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we find out that Diane sort of takes the shape, uh, ter- takes a, a different form to everyone. So she looks slightly different to everyone who sees her. It's like, we might be seeing her as Joan Cusack, but maybe the uh, podcasters sees her as Chad Michael Murray from One Tree Hill. Or the so, woman from Titanic. Or uh, the woman from Titanic. <laughs> but they always say that their name is Diane, inexplicably. And there's a theory that they possibly appear as whatever in your life uh, trampled your family as a child. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a, a reference to That's another episode. That's a callback to it. <laughs> Past episode. That's just for me and Polly. Literally no one like, well, else. very specific. Yeah. What were, were the ideas but, that around the midpoint, they find this thing and in the process of exploring it, uh, he gets cloned. Cop. He yeah. goes in and like his, his, he and his evil clone like come out, but we don't, we don't know that the evil clone came out. We actually start to figure it out over the course of the next sequence after the midpoint of like, there's someone else like, you know, working his cases and people, like had already seen him at work and et cetera, et cetera. And then we're working toward this story. Basically it's like him versus his, like his like good side of him versus his like absolute worst nihilistic traits that had been starting to take over his life. Uh, you know, and when we found him at the beginning of the movie, we're like externalizing what was internally going on in his life in the first act in the uh, template of a weird ass, like supernatural horror detective story, but told in like the gravity falls type kind of tone. Yeah. And we want, that that story to end with him sort of uh we don't exactly know what how we would uh sort of work out that third act but we want it to end with him sort of figuring out a way to get these evil versions back in the black hole and close it off and have this sort of you know emotional catharsis with kind of learning by seeing an evil version of himself he can see like the the bad and his own personality and his own sort of who he is and so he wants he at the end of the movie ends up wanting to be a better person because if you're face to face with the all the bad that you are it sort of Mm -hmm. makes you want to become even better so we want that to sort of be how we end the movie we don't know exactly how that happens but Seth you got anything else? Can't remember anything else except that the title is let's say it on three Polly one two three cat got your tongue (laughs) no I like the title Tree Watch because it's I, just... I hate that title. Because <laughs> it's like, what the hell is a movie called Tree Watch? And then you see it and you're like, bro, you got to see the movie I Tree don't even Watch. like the title for the podcast. It's called Tree Watch. Yeah, we'll figure out a good title. Anyways, Matt, do you have any Cat thoughts, walk. notes, comments? So the old man character that was the mandate is Diane? Yes. He yes. The, okay. shows up at a certain point and as the old man uh, right. and gives exposition. Well, yes. Exactly. Yeah, I dig it, dude. I mean... <laughs> 
um, the cat thing is great. I feel like it. It's a great like. It's interesting for everyone. So you keep your PG thing, but it's and it's cute, but it's like genuinely interesting. Matt okay. Black, love that. It. Love that. Yeah, and then the hard swing into um, I don't know sci-fi. Is it sci-fi or is it? Yeah, uh, it's a sci-fi horror comedy. Police okay. detective. Story. It's the idea of the horror aspects of the story have sci-fi origins like that's how yeah, we're, using, we're using it to to get there yeah i, I guess you. yeah it's something like uh, how annihilation would be sci-fi or it'd be horror where yeah. it's like it's like heavy sci-fi but there's horror elements in it or right. you know something like that yeah right. think about an amazing movie in your head while you're thinking about this one okay okay oh that helps a lot <laughs> that really does well, why, help don't, just, why don't we wait, say wait, that let me the... let me say it all again and let me just imagine it's amazing <laughs> why don't we say that at the top of every single pitch we get in the <laughs> real life like in our career it was like that one time where we pitched a whole movie and then uh, it was like, that's okay. And they were like, by the way, Wes Anderson is directing. It's like, you should have started with that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Well, Matt, I have a yeah. few questions for you. I would like you to rate one to 10. How likely are you to see this movie? Yeah, I'm very likely to see this movie. Let's see one to 10. I would say, here's what I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say eight, which is wow. a 10 for me. Because there's a lot of movies. <laughs> You're one of those guys. You're an Elliot Worley. So an Elliot Worley seven. Got it. My son, yeah. my son has a very good complex rating system that fully holds up when he explains the logic to you. But anyway, sorry, continue. Yeah, I there's a, there's like most movies that I'm like, oh, I'll definitely go see that. I don't ever, like I, it takes me forever to see them. So It looks yeah, interesting enough definitely. where you'd want to see it, but only when it's on Netflix yeah. or like when it's extremely accessible for you. The black hole in the dumpster thing is, char- is super charming. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely watch this movie. Man, I can't say how many times I've heard someone say that to me. (laughs) It's charming? The 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 black hole in the dumpster is super charming. Super charming. I mean, I think it's charming. You know, you said bathroom, and I almost was just like, no, no, no. no." Why would something sci-fi related happen? Oh, yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, that's right. That's ridiculous. (laughs) Uh, So you lost me there for like a second. And then you got me back with the dumpster. Yeah, yeah, you know? nice. Okay, how likely are you to recommend this movie to a friend? One to ten. Without having seen it? Like, I, I saw Based a trailer and then pitch. I, like, recommended it? Yeah, Based imagine if it's everything that you right now think it could be. Okay, so I saw the movie and it is what I think it is. It's it, it's um, what you think the potential of it is. It, it, it hits that. I recommend movies that I like to almost everyone. So I would say, man, I don't want to be a total just broad strokes here, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say eight. That feels good to me. I'm wow. going to say eight. This is going so much better than what I was expecting. It's like a, uh, like a high mids. Love it. Love it. Adherence to assignment. How well did we do? One to 10. We did a horror comedy. Tone was cry your eyes off. The <laughs> demographic is fancy procedurals. PG rating with an old guy uh, delivering some exposition. I think you nailed the PG and procedural and old guy. I'll say, I, I feel like you, I don't, the only thing is I didn't hear anything that felt particularly like scary in terms of like a horror set piece, other than the fact that it, that he is like an evil version of himself. So I'll say like contextually, I feel like you're there. Like I, I see how that is a horror film, but I felt like I didn't hear like a horror thing that made me go, ooh, that's scary. Mm-hmm. Other than the fact that he's just evil, which There's it's a cat scary. killing birds with its mind, but uh, yeah. So I think you nailed all of them, and maybe you nailed that one. Did we nail maybe. "cry your eyes off" for you? What does that mean? "Cry your eyes off." <laughs> Whatever it means, it's, "cry your eyes out." Is it's that it's what like it everything, means? everywhere, all at once? It's like so emotional and powerful. Did you see it yet, Matt? <laughs> I haven't seen it. That's what Dang I mean. It. There's there's movies that I that I'm like, oh yeah, I'll definitely see that, and then months will go by and I and I don't see it. Uh, I haven't seen it. No. Well, okay, but, but yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm not. I hear it's going to change my life forever. So <laughs> it changed. I don't know. I just don't know if I'm ready for that yet. No. I understand. So one to ten adherence to assignment. Uh, I'm going to say nine. Wow. Wow. Am I being way That's too generous? Than the Are others. people just brutal? No. We thought, I, we no, thought this is great. we'd finally get to hear the studio reject us uh, today, but <laughs> this oh, is great. Man. No, this I didn't is... know. I thought I if I need to be like uh, no. super cutthroat and mean, I can do that. No. Ryan, I'm not going to say Ryan, I was expecting I'm gonna be, it, but I'm gonna I kind of was inspecting. I'm going to throw Ryan under the bus. Paulie told me he's like, "There's no way we're going to sell a movie to Matt today." Matt's Matt's going to share his actual opinion, and he's going to rip it apart. To, to, to I thought shreds. you were going to rip us to shreds. I think I've shared my actual opinion. Okay, um, great. That's so sweet. It's weird with a pitch, dude. I'll say this. I'm not usually pitched things. I'm, I'm like, uh, <laughs> because I feel like it. it's, uh, I see where you're going with it. And I like that. I'm the same way. You know what I mean? You see the full yeah. potential as someone's yeah, explaining yeah. a half-baked idea. And that's why it's, I totally understand what you mean. That's how I hear pitches too. And it makes it absolutely mind-boggling. That much more frustrating. And than frustrating when people when don't you get your pitch. Because you're like, what are you not seeing? Like, you could pitch me a movie about ice cubes and I will get there with you. Like, it's not hard. Right. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, I don't know if I'm, if I just know that you guys, I feel like it's impressive that you thought of it in an hour. Yeah. I don't know. To me, it's like, I see where you're going. I mean, I, I think if I were being like crazy harsh, I'd be like, we stopped really right, would... right at the interesting part. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is, what is his interaction with himself? Like, that's the meat of the movie. What is that? Exactly. Yeah. So, like, almost if I were as being... if we, we thought of it five minutes before we pitched the yeah. movie. <laughs> right. So it's like, if I were a real studio and you were like bringing this to me because this is like your baby, I'd be like, oh, it sounds like you didn't think of it, it all the way through. But for an hour, dude, get out of here with that. That's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gosh. Well, uh, I'm oh, fine. I'll get out of here. Just before we go, can you rate our idea, overall idea, a scale of one to 10? Overall idea based on the mandate? Just based overall, on uh, just overall based idea. Based on over, whatever, overall. Overall. Okay. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be a real. Can I? I guess you guys don't curse on your podcast. All right. I'm going to yes, be a real do. jerk on this one. You oh, do. Oh, man. Okay. You went real dark there. You I'm going to be a real word. butthead on this one. I'd say overall idea. Six. Wow. Okay. I, we, we, how, we how got, bad does that we, hurt? No, we came down a little bit after that discussion, but I like it. Okay. So that means that our subtotal, we've got, uh, what is that? 16 uh, for those. We've got uh, carry the one, divide by three. Okay. 31. We've got, <laughs> 31 points. And then our ideas, I'll tell you the ideas that we start with an idea pile with five ideas that come from a generated thing of, that me and Seth can use if we want. And each one that we use, we get two points. We had a character who starts a podcast. We should start a podcast. Drugs, assassination, a black hole, and some woman named Diane. I'm Diane. And so mm-hmm. we, we use three out of the five, which means that's six points. I, th- I thought, I, th- I, for- I, I always forget that it's two points. And so I thought we were going to hit 34, like oh right no. under it and not sell the movie. And I was like, so happy. All right. Sorry. I think it's what? incredible that you guys have those and you don't use all of them every time because I would be so tempted to we, just shoehorn every, we, all, we I'll normally, be honest, we, we, we forget time. most of the time. We normally did. We oh, just okay. didn't have time on this, like this one. I think we were juggling so many things. Sometimes we get distracted sometimes. And, uh, I I think we assassination we probably could have had uh him you know assassinate drugs himself we at the easily end could have had could have drugs, yes at the uh, yeah, even yeah. at the police precinct we could have you know had some but we got three of them so it gives us six so that takes our total to 37 she could have been giving her cat drugs to calm them down i mean it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really matter guys we hit 37 and we know what that means getting a call from the studio uh let's see what happens uh, hey, studio, how's it going? I'm afraid this one's going to be a pass. Wait, 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 we hit 37 points. That doesn't make any sense. It was one of the best pitches we've ever heard. You're just kind of gross and icky to look at. That That is not, not fair. That's not fair at all. Studio, we could absolutely use some different feedback, I think. To quote the great Tony Hawk, we think you should leave the script behind and focus on something original. <sighs> That doesn't that really apply. sucks. I thought this one was going to go well. It doesn't apply at all. We loved everything about it, except for the parts we hated, which were all the parts. Oh, okay. man. Well, wow. Matt, you liked it, right? I don't know. Now I kind of feel like it sucks. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Well, studio, I'm sorry that I, I thought this was one that you'd like. Guess maybe we'll try harder next time. We felt the material was too similar to a project we already have in development. And what makes them similar is that they are both bad. Damn. Okay. Well, you got anything to say, Seth? Uh, Matt, thank you for loving our movie. We really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, sorry, oh. I, I can't think of anything to say. I guess Cat's got my tongue. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Mm. Shut your mm. damn mouth, Ryan. The Writer's Room Game Show with me, Ryan Paul, and Seth Worth. Executive produced by Grant Wakefield at Weekend Video and Ann Fogarty at Plot Devices. Edited to perfection by Renee Gomez. Our art is by your buddy, Meg Lewis, and our face-melting music is by Ben Worley. The Writer's Room Game Show is a Weekend Video production in association with Plot Devices. Learn more about Weekend Video at weekend.video and check out writersroomgame.show to listen to all of our episodes and suggest your own prompts for future shows. And don't forget to rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. It really helps our show out a lot. See you in the next one.